Hi, welcome. I'm Mary Crowley and this is Zing, a show for children of all ages. I want to say something before we begin, and that is, you are special. Never forget that there's only one of you, and you are wonderful. You have to remember that. Today we have the Sugarwood children, Jaya Davis, outside, Lynn at the farm, the Northwest Kindergarten with their art, and mention of the Chaffee and their summer camps for children, a policeman, and also drawing, and I'll leave it at that. The word for today is walk. Walk, walking is so important. A lot of people take a car or a bike when they can walk. Now taking a bike is, is fine, um, but walking uses your whole body and it is so, so very good for you. Now, if you're a small child, you can't just go walking around by yourself. You have to get somebody to go with you. Maybe your teenage sister or your grandparent or your father or a neighborhood person, and you have to walk safely. You can walk in a place like Pine Hill Park, or you can walk on the street if you're over to the left and you have a grown-up with you. The letter for today is W. W. It's the beginning of walk. The colors for today are white and black. And you'll find out why in just a while. The number is 10. 10. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 10. 10. Easy. I'm going to do something at the beginning of each show now that I haven't done before, and that is I'm going to sing happy birthday to anybody who has a birthday in the month we're filming for. And today we're filming for July. So here we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear July kids. Happy birthday to you. Oh, there's also another birthday. And you can see from this and the sign down here, July 4th is the birthday of our country, the United States of America, the USA. That's where we live and we're so lucky to live here. The birthday was July 4th, 1776. Now that's over 200 years ago. That's when I made this sign down here. I put two candles and each candle is for 100 years. It's over 200 years since July 4, 1776, when a group of men got together in Philadelphia. They got together at a place called Independence Hall, and they wrote the Declaration of Independence, which were words that said, we want to be free. We don't want to be part of England anymore. And here we are today because of what they did. So I'm going to sing happy birthday to our country. Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday USA, happy birthday to you. Don't forget, White's Pool is open, and also the playground there is open, the tennis courts are open, but the pool is open. The Sugarwood children are going to be showing you black and white. W-H-I-T-E, that spells white, sing with me, milk is white, and so is blue, ghosts are white, and they say boo, W-H-I-T-E. The name of this letter is W and sign of it is Whoa. The name of this letter is W and sign of it is Whoa. The name of this letter is W and sign of it is Whoa. The name of this letter is W and sign of it is Whoa. The name of this letter is W and sign of it is Whoa. The name of this let
name of this letter is H, and the sound of it is H. Huh. Oh, not, it doesn't say anything. The name of this letter is I, and the sound of it is I. The name of this letter is T, and it says T. The name of this letter is E. The sound of this, the sound of E is, is silent. Doesn't make any sound. B L A C K spells black, yellow. B L A C K spells black, yellow. Some flying bats are black. Some cute cats are black. Some jelly beans are black. Thank you. Wasn't that fun? Jaya Davis is in charge of Come Alive Outside, which is a wonderful program. Because of that, I am walking pretty much first thing every day, usually for 30 minutes. And I just feel so good after I get through my walk. Hello. It's a beautiful sunny morning at Rotary Park. I'm here with Jaya Davis, who is the program person at Come Alive Outside. And we're here now to talk about what you might get to help you get outside. Want to talk about this a little, Jay? Sure. Um, the Rutland Recreation Department. We each have one. <laughs> always puts together this guide. It's called Go Play Guide. And you can get it in paper copy or go online at rutlandrec.com and find it there. And inside are lots of things to do in our area. Um, there's a list of swimming lessons, information about swimming lessons, uh, information about day camps that kids can sign up for. There's also a whole page about youth sports. So if you're interested in trying out a sport, you could sign up um, for different activities and also summer camps. So lots of good, fun lots things for good families. Lots of things going on, unbelievable. Sign up and look in this book. Now, Jay and I are dressed for outdoors. And I'll just go <clears throat> from my boots up. It's important to wear long pants and long shirt, no matter what the weather is, because there is a danger from ticks. A tick is an insect that can bite you and you will get a terrible, terrible sickness if a tick bites you. And so we're protecting ourselves against ticks. I have on my old boots and my old pants. They are thin. So even if it were a hot day, I wouldn't be hot. And I've pulled up my socks over my pants so that the ticks couldn't get me. Neither could mosquitoes or other flying insects. I have on a shirt and it's 
tucked into my pants. Tuck in, because then the tick can't get to you. Your skin is more protected. And then I have this old shirt over here. Also, I have this scarf in case there are lots of ticks, mosquitoes, flying insects, in case I realize, and I'm on a hike or a long walk, uh, that I need to cover my whole hair, I can take this scarf and put it on. I also have a hat. And it's a good idea to wear a hat because, first of all, that shields your face from the sun, and secondly, it takes care of your hair. Your if you go under a tree, it's possible that a tick can drop down from a tree branch onto your head and you might never find it because it's on your hair. Tough. So if you're wearing a hat, it's better. Now, Jaya, you want to talk about what other things kids might do outside? Sure. Okay. Um, yeah, and you don't have to go to the park just to be outside. Right. Uh, you could play in your own backyard or front yard if you have some space. Yes. Um, also, you could use the sidewalk and draw on it with chalk or a hopscotch. You can make a hopscotch game. Um, yeah, and you can always do things on your own like jump rope or um, hula hoop. So some things that you can do by yourself. And then if you wanted to get some friends and family together, you could just go for a walk, a hike, a run, swimming, um, or play a game uh, like a frisbee game or toss a ball around. So lots of things you could do on and your lot own. Of, a lot or, of those things that you just mentioned are free. <laughs> right. Yes. Yes. You can just yeah. do them. Right. All mo And you can come to the park for free, right. trails for free. So yes. lots of fun activities for free. You could play frisbee. I happen to have a frisbee <laughs> with me. Yes. Yes. <laughs> All right. Let's take off the hat. Frisbee is a game that anybody can play. <laughs> Maybe hard to catch it. But Sometimes. you can be any age, right? any number. You don't need a court or any special place. You can just find Even some grass and do it. Even play with your dog. Dog yes, you can. Catching you can. Frisbees. That's, that's amazing. <laughs> Good point. <laughs> if you have a dog. Uh, <clears throat> Pine Hill Park has this trail guide. And if you open it up, we really have an amazing city. There is there a map of the trails that are right near Giorgetti. And then if you open it up even more, you can see how to go on a long mm. hike. Mm -hmm. Maybe you wouldn't want to go on a long hike. I think hike. 16 miles maybe 16 of miles. trails. Okay. Pine Hill Park is a huge park. So many it different places. It is a places. huge park. I know people like to walk out to this big pond out here. And there's Rocky Pond, there's nice Muddy Pond. Nice place to go. Um, also in Pine Hill Park is a natural play area. So on the littlest trail, the lower Georgetti Trail, right. there's a little place where you can um, use the sticks and logs and build whatever you want to build. So make a That's teepee or um, use your imagination and try and create something that is a wonderful in idea. the play area. And if you are a child and can't understand this trail guide. I'm sure that you know a grown-up who can explain it to you. Yes. Come alive outside. Get the passport mm -hmm. and go to the different parks and look for the secret number and write it down. And after you go out five times, either to one park or a number of parks, right. then what do you do? Uh, you can go to Wonderfeet Kids Museum or Jordani Arena and pick up your prize. Um, frisbees, water bottles, beach balls, and you get to pick up your prize because you went to the parks. Okay, so all you have to do <laughs> is go to the same park or different parks five times to get a prize, mm -hmm. then 10 more times you get another prize, then 15 times you get another prize, and then how many more at the end, 20? I think 20. I think 20, yes. another prize. And then at the end of the summer, you turn your little book the passport in to school to school right and then that will be part of a drawing and you might get a really big prize right, right? yes grand prizes so, <laughs> yes, so you'll have a chance to win a grand prize in September very good <laughs> so get 
outside. Get outside in the warm weather, because before you know it, the leaves will be turning and it will be winter. That's the way it is here in Vermont. True, we only have a short time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Thank you, Jaya. Thank you so much. We visited Lynn's farm, the Damaray farm. She raises vegetables and flowers, and she really knows what she's doing. So she's going to share some of what she does on her farm. Welcome to Damaray Farm. When I was a girl, I grew up on a small farm in Massachusetts, and we had animals. I had cat cows. I had Jersey cows. They are all brown, and they look like little deer. I never learned how to raise vegetables, so I'm teaching myself. I decided to do two things. I wanted to grow vegetables naturally, completely naturally in soil with no chemicals, which to which, what that means is I don't spray the food with anything to keep bugs off or to make them grow bigger. They grow this big because I have them in really good soil and really clean water. So what I do is I take seeds and every three weeks I plant greens in these beds. These are now six weeks old and they're ready to eat. They are spinach, lettuce, we have an herb over here, another spinach, we've got some dill here, and then I've got a whole bunch of assorted greens that we're going to actually eat for lunch today. It's a really healthy lunch. I often just have them with a piece of bread, possibly with some chicken, but I know that I grew them here on our farm and they taste delicious. Thanks, Lynn. It was great to be out there. The Northwest children did a work of art together. Hi, I'm at Northwest School in Mrs. Campopiano's kindergarten class. And the children have been working on a picture based on Van Gogh's flowering tree. And then they were free to add what they wanted to. And they'll be showing you what they've done. I step-by-step step showed them what they might do and how they might add white on top of red to make pink and how they might change the color of brown so it wasn't so dark. And this is partly done. And they started with blue paper so they had the sky color already there. And they are now working on another picture, and they're choosing what they want to do. They might be uh, doing a playground picture, or hearts, or whatever it is they love. But they'll be showing you what they did on their flowering tree. Um, Destiny, I like everything. You like everything. <laughs> Thank you, Destiny. I like them. But I yes. got mine. Point to it. Baby Elliot. Very fun. Everything. Thank you. I'm Myra. What do you and, like the best? And I like everything. Good. Okay. I am Allie and I like my tree. You like your tree. Thank you, Larry. I'm Olivia. What do you like best? I like the tree and the butterfly. The tree and the butterfly. Thank you. What is your name? Lillian. Lillian. What do you like the best about yours? I like the sun and the tree. The sun and the tree. Thank you. My name is Bryce. I like everything. Bryson likes everything. Good. <laughs> Thank you. I like everything. Cameron likes everything. My name is Pearl and I like my dog. She likes her doggy. Thank you, Pearl. All right, Mallory, what do you like the best? Well, I'll tell you what I like. I like the color everywhere. Do you? Okay. Thank you. My name is JJ, and I like everything. You like everything, JJ. Okay. My name is Darrell, and I like cats. Okay. Thank you, Darrell. <laughs> Thank you, all you kindergarten children in Mrs. Campo Piano's class. 
The Chaffee Art Center is open again, and there are going to be very exciting things going on there. A, pa a show of pastel paintings, the Pastel Society of Vermont. That means that they will have pictures done in something like chalk, only it's, it's better than chalk. It's beautiful. They will also have two camps for children in August. And also they will have art in the park, which means there'll be all kinds of tents in Main Street Park and food to eat and uh, paintings to look at and jewelry and crafts and just all kinds of things. The Chaffee Art Center. It's a wonderful, wonderful place. Next, we're going to see a policeman whose beat is downtown. Okay, hi there, I'm Officer Kevin Blongey. I've been with the Rutland Police Department for 33 years. Um, I used to work in patrol, but now I do downtown foot patrol. I walk around downtown. I'm looking around to see if anything's different. Um, I find a lot of vandalism or when somebody damages other property or city property. Um, I'm looking into people, make sure that they're behaving, um, or just saying hi to them, or if somebody's having a bad day, I'll stop and talk with them. And if they need a little help along many lines, I know who to call to get them the help that they need. I do write some parking tickets. Most people downtown actually like the fact that I'm out there walking and visiting with them, and um, I stop in, like I said, I stop in a several businesses every day to say hi to people. Um, also, if you're ever at a community event, you'll usually find me there when there's different people set up. Um, this year we did a skating event with the kids from North West Elementary at Rotary Field. We also get involved with a lot of the elderly population and do different events with them. The safety days, my unit usually is there, or the people that I work with all the time are usually there. But I visit most of the businesses and the people that work downtown, and the people at Wonderfeet Kids Museum. I'm there quite a bit, along with the Boys and Girls Club. I'm usually armed with these. So if you see me on the street, you can ask me for one, because I usually always have them. They look just like our badge. I also, go to the intermediate school every year and teach DARE, which is drug abuse resistance education. It teaches kids how to be safe and responsible. And if you go to the Rutland schools, you'll see me in fifth grade there. So when I first started, I worked what we call patrol. Those are the police officers you see driving around in the, car, the cars. And we handle calls. When you call for help, we come to your house or we come to wherever you are to help you out. It could be something small or it could be a little bit bigger. It could be a car accident. Um, it could be somebody vandalized mom and dad's car. Um, it could be a whole lot of things. Or you might get separated from your parents, so we'll show up and help you find them. If it's an emergency and you really need help, you call 911. If not, if you're really young, I would have you find a responsible adult to look up the regular number for the police department if it's not really an emergency. I do like being a police officer. I've been doing it my whole adult life. Thank you so much. It's wonderful to have different people from the police department on. I will be setting up a stand, but I'm going to be showing you some signs, and they'll say, ice water. I just think this is so much fun. I had a good time trying to figure out how to set up this stand. So I'll do it right now. I'm here at my ice water stand. I have a sign that says ice water, 10 cents. Now the 10 cent size is this size right here. And it's a good size. If you're thirsty, this would be fine. 10 cents. I have a cooler and I brought cold water in an old milk carton. If there's a tiny child <clears throat> and that child only needs a little bit of water, this is the size that's five cents. And I think every house has some kind of 
old glass or mason jar or something that would be okay for a large ice water. You have some kind of a container to put it in. If you save milk cartons or, I don't know, juice containers, there are all kinds of ways that you could have water. I have a cooler. You probably have to have a cooler of some sort to keep your cold water in. All right, what did I have in my bag that I brought? Uh, I had the glasses. I had some napkins just in case somebody would need some. I wouldn't give one out because they cost money. But if somebody needed, something spilled. Now in this that I got in an event is money to make change. Here's a dollar bill. And in here, in the zipper part, there are coins. And I can reach in and I can get some coins and I can use those coins. If somebody gives me a dollar bill, I may have to give that person change. And uh, right here are two paintings. So after you make the sale of the water, you might say to the person who bought the water, would you like to buy a piece of art? And then the person would say, oh no, not today. Or the person would say, well, yes, I would. And you might say, OK, 15 cents. You may take that home. I'm glad that you wanted to buy my art. You have to be able to pour the water. So you need to practice that ahead of time. So if you're going to have this size glass, you don't fill weight at the top because you don't want to spill it as you hand it to the person. And you put the top on your ice water and put it back in the cooler. And then the person drinks it. Mm. I can't tell you how good ice water is on a hot day. It is absolutely wonderful. Mm. And I'll put that to one side. Now we'll get to just a little bit of drawing. Now what I'm going to do is just make a sign. And I make a sign without putting any lines down. But you might want to have a light line for ice, another line for water. But I will do it this way. All right, so I'm going to do ice. And I'll do this in lowercase letters. Ice, water. This is moving. This is hard. But life is hard, so we better get used to it. Ice, water. And then I go. It's a curve, another curve. It just kind of separates there. Ice water, so it's clear what I'm selling. Now, if I'm selling lemonade, then I've got to put that there, too. But ice water, 10 cents. Now, if you're thirsty, this size ice water is a real bargain. And you can say that, hey, this is, this is really special. You'll love it. Then, if I want to, I can put down here large because I'd like to sell the large because I make the most money on the large that's 25 cents and then the tiny and I'll put it in tiny letters because I'm not going to make much money on tiny that's five cents so I've got that filled up now one thing I can do if I don't want to do all those curves is I can do some lines like this I just think that makes it, I don't know, makes it look like it's easier to read. And I usually put my initials on everything I do. This is not really a work of art. It's a design with words. But I put my initials MRC there. So anyway, I had great fun figuring out how to put together an ice water stand. It's been wonderful to be with you. I love doing this show. I love getting ready for it. I feel like a child again. Remember, you're special. You're a star, yes you are. You're a special sort of star, yes you are. Special star, special, special, special star. Goodbye.